A few months ago, I put up a couple of proof of concept videos of doing some rendering inside of Unity and compositing it in After Effects. Since then, I've done some polishing and got it to a state where I'm pretty happy to share it now, share the workflow, and so that's what I'll be doing today. We'll be teaching you how to do this. This step's pretty simple. What we're going to do is we're going to create a composition from our footage and add the 3D camera tracker effect to that. So to do that, we go effect, perspective, and 3D camera tracker. Now this is automated, so we can just sit back and relax until it's done. Once the tracking is done, you'll want to select a bunch of points that are as close to where you're going to be putting the model as possible. Using a ground plane is easier later on. Hold control and drag the left mouse button to lasso around them, and you'll see a target appear. Right click and choose set ground plane and origin, or if you're not using a flat surface, skip that. Right click again and go create solid and camera. Now this will create our track solid and our 3D camera. And if you come down here and scrub through the timeline, you can see that the solid is actually tracked in 3D space and looks as if it's actually part of the scene. In this step, we're going to prepare the layers for export. So we're going to create a new null object and come down to toggle switches and change that to a 3D null. Next, we're going to change the camera from active to front. And we want to align the, the, uh, the solid and the camera so that we can see the solid straight on. So we'll select both the solid and the camera and pick with them to the null. So now you can see that the null is their parent. And now we can make adjustments to that null. So we're first going to rotate it along the x-axis so that we can see the solid. Next, we're going to position the solid so that it's about halfway, or as close as halfway as possible. Because we set the ground plane, we can actually cheat and set this to 1920, which is our working resolution width. And then set the depth, or the z-axis, to 540, which is exactly halfway of 1080. Again, if you're not working with a flat surface, you'll actually have to manually adjust this, but it's, it's still doable. We're going to change the camera back to active, and you can see it hasn't really changed at all. That's because the camera and the solid have been moved relative to each other. Next, we're going to go File, Scripts, and if you're using 3ds Max, you choose AE3D, Blender, you use Blender. I haven't had much success with Blender, so we'll be doing this. Change it to 3ds Max, Options, shift the comp center, and we want the world scale to be at 1 1. Give it a name. Browse unfortunately doesn't work in this, but it'll export it to the desktop automatically. So we can give it a name here, so tutorial track, hit export, and our file will be created. Worth mentioning as well that you should have the track solid and 3D camera layers selected before opening the script or pressing export. Create a new scene in 3ds Max and locate where that exported file is. Simply drag that into the 3ds Max and you're pretty much done. As you can see, there's a camera there with the uh, null object. Scroll through the timeline and you can see the camera move how we'd like it to. Next, all you're going to do is just select them both. Go to Max, Export, Selected. Save it in a location that you usually save things to. Name it Camera Tracker. Now the important options, forget about geometry, we want to tick the animation box, bake animation, so that we get the animation baked into the file, and resample all. Start should be at zero, end should be at wherever it ends, and step should be one. Ignore the warning because we don't actually have any geometry, so it doesn't matter. And that's 3ds Max done. Once you've exported from 3ds Max, you want to grab that FBX and bring it into Unity. I'm going to drag it into the Animations folder here. Click on that FBX and change the Animation Compression to Off. That's in the Animations tab. And hit Apply. Next, we're going to bring that into the Capture Manager. Into the Capture Manager. And we're going to set some settings. So we know that it's 808 frames long. 
going to drag the animator there into that track animator. And that's the animator component it's making, uh, making sure of. Set a resolution and frame rate. We're going to render one object here and place that camera inside of the tracker object. Now, we want the resolution to be rotated negative 90 on the y-axis or 270, both exactly the same. And this should give us our view. The camera should now be looking where the track solid is. We also happen to have a mine bot there. Now the object surrender will cycle through and enable and disable the mesh uh, per camera. So that'll allow you to render the objects and render the shadows separately. Now once that's all done, yeah, that looks all good. Ah, in the camera tracker, we want to add the tracker controller. And inside of the tracker controller, click on take one. We want to copy over the animation we've copied over into there and that'll give us the proper animation. Now all we need to do is hit play and when we're ready we can just hit K to begin rendering and then we'll bring it into After Effects. Inside of After Effects you want to right click and go Import File and you want to navigate to where the uh, renders are made. That's in the Unity project file folder, and there's a folder called Renders. Select Mesh 0 and set it to PNG Sequence and hit Import. Then do it again. Go Import File. This time look for Shadow underscore 0. Make sure it's PNG Sequence and hit Import. Now you might need to uh, interpret the footage by going right clicking Interpret Main, making sure that it's assuming the frame rate of 25 frames per second, or whatever your footage is set to. Now just click these and drag them into the composition. And you can see that there's a white background. That's actually from the shadows layer. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on there, toggle the switches, change the mode from normal to multiply. And it's looking pretty good. If we scrub through, we can see that it's tracked. And that's just how easy it is. If you enjoyed the tutorial, let me know in the comments. And if you've created anything cool, let me know on Twitter. I like to see what other people create. Thanks for watching.